My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, God has given us another day, a beautiful day to give thanks and glorify Him. Let Him glorify Himself through us. Welcome to this weekly reflective session to listen to the Word of God, renew our souls, transforming us to be worthy of His kingdom. My name is Dr. John and I call myself an unworthy child of Abba Father. Through His Son, our Lord's crucifixion, we all have been made worthy of His kingdom. Let's live our Catholic faith and be ready for our Lord's call. In today's session, we shall renew our understanding on Eucharistic miracles happening across the world in Catholic churches. Our Lord continues to give us His signs, letting us know that He has got our back all the time, every day, every moment of our lives. I am like St. Thomas, and my doubting nature has been given due consideration by God the Father, strengthening my faith, renewing it every day because He loves me more than I do. The latest Eucharistic miracle has been reported from Mexico. This has happened in Guadalajara, Mexico. It seems as if the heart beating Eucharist is portraying blood pumping through the valves within the chambers of the heart. Further scientific analysis needs to be done. This took place on the 24th of July, 2022. Here is what the priest who celebrated Mass had to say. This has been translated from Spanish to English verbatim. I sent you what has happened here in Guadalajara. We had Mass, the conference. We exposed the Blessed Sacrament. As soon as I exposed it, this happened. Because the tabernacle was covered with curtains, we opened and this happened. Precisely the day, there had to be adoration that night. And you see how the host is inflated like a heart. You see how it has a stole and diastole movement and the heart beats at the perfect rhythm of a human being. This was analyzed by a doctor who was present and he looked at the movement of it and said, it is perfect, the heart with the exact movement. This just happened and also in that mass, a lady who got a strong conversion, she took communion and the host started beating inside her mouth. She was very surprised and then this happened as something objective that shows that this is indeed like this because it happened to her in her mouth and then it happened outside too. So well, I show to you this because it can help a lot of people who doubt the Eucharist or whatever, but very nice things have happened to us these days, doing mission and very nice conversions. God bless you, Father Carlos Spawn. The Catholic Church teaches a dogma called transubstantiation, which the Catechism explains as the consecration of the bread and wine. There takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ our Lord and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of His blood. This teaching is based on the scripture and tradition that has remained unchanged in its essence since apostolic times. The Church has recognized that on occasions, God intervenes in a more visible way and can even change the appearances of the bread and wine into the real body and blood. Or God may miraculously preserve a consecrated host for an extended amount of time past what is natural for bread. Here are four of the most incredible Eucharistic miracles that have been examined by top scientists around the world who ultimately concluded that science could not explain the miraculous phenomenon. Number one is Lanciano, Italy. In the 8th century, a priest had doubts about the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. One day during Mass after the consecration, the bread and wine turned visibly into flesh and blood. In 1970-71 and again in 1981, a scientific investigation was led by the scientist Odorado Linoli, professor of anatomy and pathological histology and in chemistry and clinical microscopy. He was assisted by Professor Rogero Bertoli of the University of Siena. They concluded that the flesh is cardiac tissue which contains arterioles, these are some branches of arteries and veins as well as nerve fibers. The blood type in unison with all other approved Eucharistic miracles was discovered to be type AB. 
According to Zenit, the higher council of the WHO, World Health Organization, they appointed a scientific commission to verify the Italian doctor's conclusions. The work was carried out over 15 months with a total of 500 examinations and confirmed that science was unable to explain the phenomenon. Number two is Legnica, Poland. In 2013, Bishop Sebegnio Kimikowski of the Diocese of Legnica stated, On 25th December 2013, during the distribution of the Holy Communion, a consecrated host fell to the floor and then was picked up and placed in a water-filled container called a vasculum. Soon after, stains of red color appeared. The former Bishop of Legnica, Stephen Sitchi, set up a commission to observe the phenomenon. In February 2014, a tiny red fragment of the host was separated and put on a corporal. The commission ordered to take samples in order to conduct the thorough tests by the relevant research institutes. After the investigations, the Department of Forensic Medicine stated, In the histopathological image, the fragments of tissue have been found containing the fragmented parts of the cross-striated muscle of the heart. The whole is most similar to the heart muscle with alterations that often appear during physical strain or agony. The genetic researchers indicate the human origin of the tissue. Number 3 is Buenos Aires, Argentina. On August 18, 1996, as Father Alejandro Pezet concluded Mass at the parish of Santa Maria, a woman reported that a consecrated host had been desecrated on a candle holder in the back of the church. Unable to consume the host, Father Pesset placed it in a dish of water and stored it in the tabernacle. The following Monday, the priest opened the tabernacle and found that the host appeared to be a bloody substance. The miracle was reported to Cardinal George Bergoglio, who was now Pope Francis. He had led an investigation into the miracle after the bloody host was miraculously preserved for several years. On October 5, 1999, in the presence of the Cardinal's representatives, scientist Dr. Ricardo Castanon Gomez took a sample of the bloody fragment and sent it to New York for analysis. One of these scientists was Dr. Frederick Zugiba, the well-known cardiologist and forensic pathologist. He determined that the analyzed substance was real flesh and blood containing human DNA. Dr. Zugiba testified that the analyzed material is a fragment of the heart muscle found in the wall of the left ventricle close to the valves. This muscle is responsible for contraction of the heart. It should be borne in mind that the left cardiac ventricle pumps blood to all parts of the body, nourishing the entire body. The heart muscle is an inflammatory condition and contains a large number of white blood cells. This indicates that the heart was alive at the time the sample was taken. The doctor said, it is my contention that the heart was alive since white blood cells die outside a living organism and they require a living organism to sustain them. Thus, their presence indicates that the heart was alive and the sample was taken. What is more, these white blood cells had penetrated the tissue which further indicates that the heart had been under severe stress due to agony as if the owner had been beaten severely about the chest region. And number four, Tixla, Mexico. On October 21, 2006, during a parish retreat, a consecrated host that was about to be distributed effused a reddish substance. The bishop of the place, Most Reverend Alejo Zavala Castro, convened a theological commission to investigate the and determine if it was a hoax or a genuine miracle. In October 2009, he invited Dr. Ricardo Castanon Gomez to conduct scientific research with a team of scientists and verify the miraculous nature of the occurrence. Dr. Gomez had by then just finished his investigation into the miracle that occurred in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The scientific research conducted between October 2009 and October 2012 released the following statement. The reddish substance analyzed corresponds to blood in which there is hemoglobin and DNA of human origin. Two studies conducted by eminent forensic experts with different methodologies have shown that the substance originates from the interior, excluding the hypothesis that someone could have placed it from the exterior. The blood type is AB, similar to the one found in the host of Lanciano and in the Holy Shroud of Turin. A microscopic analysis of magnification and penetration reveals that the superior part of the blood has been coagulated since October 2006. 
Moreover, the underlying internal layers revealed in February 2010 the presence of fresh blood. The event does not have a natural explanation. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 27 we read, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29 we read, How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them and who has insulted the spirit of grace. In John 15, 5, we read, I am the wine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him shall bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. In Matthew 21, verses 12 through 13, we read about Jesus entering the temple and driving out all those who were buying and selling in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a robber's den. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 we read, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Therefore I need to drive out everything from within me, the temple of God, that's not worthy of God's kingdom, and give first place to Him. Let's worship our Lord God with all our strength, with all our might, and give ourselves as a complete offering. Let us be worthy in our body, mind, and soul to receive Jesus through the breaking of bread and wine, partaking in the Holy Communion where He is present. He is present in flesh and blood. When is the last time we've had a full good confession? I had it last week and I'm going again this week. I'm taking cues from saints like Padre Pio. God bless you.